Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's Investor Pitch hosted by International Accelerator. A little bit of background on International Accelerator. We are a 12-month on-site acceleration program located here in Austin, Texas. We are focused exclusively on working with foreign-born founders and helping them bring their business to the United States, helping them with everything from immigration and formation assistance launching and scaling, growing their revenue while they're with us and ultimately leading them through the Series A fundraising round um, here in the US market. For today's agenda, we will be showcasing three of our portfolio companies who will each be given 15 minutes to pitch. Then we'll use about five minutes for a Q&A session. After today's session, contact information will be shared with all attendees on this call. In the meantime, any questions that you have, you can email me directly during this call at jack at iaccelerator.com. First of our companies presenting today is Noble. I would like to introduce Mario and Maurizio Hernandez. Noble integrates the power of social networks, crowdfunding, third-party apps, and wearable tech under one philanthropic roof. I'll now turn over the screen share to Noble. Hello, everyone. Can you hear us? Got you loud and clear. Wonderful. Excellent. We're going to be sharing our pitch. Um, can you see it well? All right. Excellent. Um, well, thank you again for joining us today. Um, and thank you to the International Accelerator for hosting this event. As Jack mentioned, we are Mauricio and Mario. We're co-founders and brothers of Noble. And we're excited to introduce to you the first dedicated philanthropic social network. Uh, just to give you an outside of the landscape, you think business connections, you go to LinkedIn, you think personal connections, you go to Facebook, uh, photo sharing, you automatically go to Instagram. However, when we mention philanthropy, then it seems like people don't know where to go. And thus, that's something that we wanted to tackle and we're bringing one-stop shop for absolutely everything that has to deal with philanthropy, uh, whether it is tackling climate change, uh, healthcare initiatives, promoting education, anything within this world or context we're touching upon here at Noble. So we've created a social networking uh, landscape where you can connect with your colleagues, friends, family members, follow businesses, follow the nonprofits that you most care about, causes that you're most passionate about. And this allows you an entire new user experience uh, to connect with other kindred spirits, people that care about the same passions that you do. We have um, easy fundraising tools. We have a whole new gamma of services to provide to different players within the philanthropic sphere. As Mario mentioned, um, this, this at the heart of Noble really is a campaign creation tool like really doesn't exist out in the market at the moment. You might be uh, very knowledgeable and aware of other campaign creation tools that are out there, crowdfunding tools that are out there, like Kickstarter, like GoFundMe. Um, but Noble puts a twist into the current crowdfunding landscape. Um, usually you crowdfund a monetary goal. Noble will allow its users to crowdfund uh, an activity goal, uh, something that is trackable. And in this case, we're tracking APIs across third-party services and providers. This includes things like listening to music and playing video games, running, walking, swimming, um, driving your Tesla, anything that you do during your regular course of your life, we'll be able to track and, and, and um, create campaigns for. At launch, Noble will have partnerships with Spotify, Tesla, Apple Health, and Fortnite, which means that these four partnerships with these four APIs will be tracked within Noble for our users to generate campaigns with. As a quick example, I could generate a campaign that invites my friends, family, uh, and coworkers to walk 100,000 steps. If those 100,000 steps are walked and tracked by the users that I invite, then the uh, monetary pledges that have been placed into the campaign will be sent to the nonprofit of my choice. Now, those funds that are pledged will come from myself or from users that I invite or from sponsors and partnerships with brands that decide to back my campaign, which leads us into an interesting question, who and what is Noble for? As we were mentioning before, it's for absolutely everyone. Um, given that these are the most important players within the philanthropic landscape, 
We think about the individuals and the problems that they currently face within the philanthropic sphere. Uh, being that usually they consider philanthropy to be associated with wealth. And that's something that we, we are dismantling. We're democratizing philanthropy because of the API possibilities that technology brings about. Um, as Mauricio mentioned, now you have the possibility to donate monetarily. However, those who don't have the means to do so can still feel involved. And that's a big word for us at Noble Inclusion. So that individuals who don't have those monetary means can still participate in campaigns by doing what they love and have an entire new user experience within philanthropy. They can participate in causes by just going out for that walk, by right? just listening to that song and feel that they are actually making a difference. So the individuals have a, have a whole new level of intimacy with philanthropy. The nonprofits, uh, a major player and extremely important. We're providing them an entire new solution of storytelling. Storytelling is one of their most important factors uh, for them to actually obtain fundraising. And they have this uh, problem because they're within different social networks like Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, et cetera, which might have plenty of users. However, their focus is in philanthropy. And so they feel lost in retaining those donors and in, in maintaining interest in their causes. And we're providing them a dedicated uh, landscape that's absolutely free to use uh, for them to, again, create campaigns, connect with businesses that it's so important for them to do so, and connect with individuals, maintain those stories alive, and maintain uh, their interest and connections very well, very well informed. And finally, we're talking about the businesses. Um, businesses is a, is a major player for us, and we're very happy to bring an extremely valuable resource for them. It's a two-way street with businesses. One is being their marketing efforts. This is a new marketing tool that's available for them to use and leverage to be able to connect now with new customers and new users. Before, they had a hard time finding an ROI into the CSR efforts. Now with Noble, you actually have the opportunity to turn those CSR initiatives into a marketing budget and allow you to increment your brand exposure, increment that communication to the users as well and to potential new clients. Furthermore, those businesses that have APIs, we're gonna jump on board with. Mauricio mentioned these APIs that we're already working with. Uh, you can think of Epic Games, those who own Fortnite, they're gonna be creating campaigns and this becomes a new tool for them to say, listen, we're gonna be doing good to the community, causing social impact, but we know fully well that we're inviting new users to come in and play their game. This provides them a whole new revenue stream by doing good and by actually being philanthropic. So individuals, nonprofits, and businesses, as you can see, work as a triangle, work together, doing good, but also doing good business. We are mentioning four APIs at the moment. We're mentioning Spotify, we're mentioning Apple Health, Tesla, uh, Fortnite, but the vision of Noble really is to connect with as many APIs as we can within the market. The potential for scale is, is quite large. And our vision uh, is that where philanthropy can be, uh, can be achieved in everything that you do from the moment you wake to the moment you go to sleep, as almost everything we do during the day and at night is being currently tracked. It's, impo it's important to mention that the three players that we're showing in this slide um, are all of equal standing within Noble in the sense that the app is at the moment an iOS uh, app only, but um, is absolutely free for all three of the users. The campaign creation tool is absolutely free for each one of the users, and um, they can all create the same type of campaigns. Now, it's um, important to note that at launch, incredibly so, we're gonna have already access to over 2 million nonprofits, and this is made possible with our partnership with Benevity, a Canadian firm with many years um, in the market and credibility and reputation that we can provide to our users and clients. This provides a level of personalization that they can actually go to uh, help the causes that they most care about, have um, all the different types of nonprofits that they can work with and companies can choose again the different nonprofits that they've already worked with in the past. So this partnership is extremely crucial for us to provide this level of flexibility as well in the market. Furthermore, the business model is extremely clear and straightforward. We're obtaining a 5% commission on successful campaign completions, meaning that if a campaign collects $100, then five of those dollars will go to the Noble platform. 
Um, in addition, we're going to be jumping on ad revenue. Uh, that's why user growth is going to be so important for us, user retention, um, providing them this level of user experience so that they're very well maintained in the network and engaged. This is what we're currently working on. The future of Noble uh, is also bright with scalability in that we foresee other sources of revenue, including an enterprise solution where um, enterprises with you know, their thousands of users can also then create internal campaigns. And this is just for, for future reference of what, of what Noble seeks to, seeks to be. Um, we do know that ideas are a plenty in the startup game. And really it comes to the team and its execution that will determine how successful that uh, idea will be. My brother and myself have been um, in business for over 15 years together. Uh, our first venture was a Latin American enterprise solution business called Movila Solutions. Um, and after that, we sold Movila, we exited from Movila and we founded Aqua Suave, which is a water distribution company based out of Dominican Republic. Um, and after Aqua Suave and that experience, um, we, we exited and we have now started Noble. Uh, which is our definitely most passion-based project and really our la largest in ambition. Um, given that ambition, we know that the team that surrounds us will be just as important, if not more so than ourselves as founders. Um, we are honored to be part uh, of the IA and a portfolio company representing the International Accelerator. We count with Angelos Angelos and his um, vast uh, network of connections here in Austin and in the rest of the United States. But on top of that, we count with uh, the internal team within the IA, including Park and Mohammed as CFO and CMO, respectively. Uh, we have partnered with a tech lawyer out of Tampa Bay called Brent Britton. I would highly suggest to look him up. Um, very successful lawyer and uh, of great help for us. We have outsourced our development needs with a company based in Florida called 12 Skies Tech. They are the ones um, developing the application at the moment. And our Security and compliance and privacy concerns are also outsourced with a company called Input and Output. Uh, they are helping us with everything that has to do with uh, the legal compliance given the nature of the application um, and also our server security needs uh, given the, um, the data that is being introduced into the application. So we are taking security and compliance very seriously as well. Understanding the space that we're in, uh, speed of execution is extremely uh, of grand importance for us. So we're going to be looking into a million dollars uh, to recollect this year. Uh, the use of these funds will go into three main factors, uh, specifically being the go-to-market strategy so that we can actually get um, market fit, get customer feedback, get this into the user's hands and make it aggressive. Android development, as Mauricio mentioned before, we're currently iOS only at the moment. Uh, but we're going to want to expand that reach given that Noble's going to be a global company. And our biggest weakness that uh, we're not afraid to mention, however, we're already tackling is the search of a fractional CTO. Um, this is something that we're already having uh, quite a lot of interviews in the past few weeks, and we want to be able to cement in the coming weeks or months so that we actually have this as well installed into our team, which is ex of extreme importance. The capital ask is gonna be coming in the form of safe agreements. At the moment, we're already valued at $5 million, understanding fully well that after the app actually launches in the next two or three weeks, it's gonna be changing. Uh, we're gonna be obtaining already revenue and users into the app as well. And the idea is to look for this um, capital ask again in a year's time. At the moment, we're looking for 200 to 250,000, um, but this will be a fundraising round that we're gonna be going through the next few months. You've seen the tip of the iceberg at the moment with uh, what we presented. Mauricio mentioned we already have these four APIs already involved. However, those are the industry leaders. Uh, what we foresee in Noble is an extremely large vision, very ambitious and a company with much longevity of over 20 years. Again, philanthropy is not ending anytime soon and we want to be the face of it. Uh, just as you see any business that says, look us up on Facebook, on Instagram, Twitter, they're going to be looking it up on Noble as well. And we're going to be on top of that. So we're very focused on the present, um, as any startup should be. However, we also have our eyes set on the future to make sure that we can make this uh, an incredible success. So thank you again for taking a listen to us. 
Uh, the beta is going to be very uh, available very soon, so we invite you to scan the QR code. And if you do have any questions, any doubts, concerns, or anything that you'd like to discuss, well, then we're more than open to, to tackle it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Mario and Maurizio. Um, one question that did come in that I think you guys answered was, is the charity section selection wide or are you only able to pick from a few options? I think you answered that with the slide about the partnership with Benevity uh, is, and the access to over 2 million charities. So quite a broad, um, broad berth of selected. Yes, that's yes. We, we, we do have access to over 2 million and it's, um, we have the ability to separate by, by industry. Uh, where the nonprofit is based, um, users will also be able to favorite uh, their 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 most um, precious nonprofits and and have them in a in a very quickly accessible list. Um, so yes, the access is uh, quite humongous and varied, and, and sometimes overwhelming. It's important to note that we're going to be focused first on the U.S. market of nonprofits. And then in the coming months, because of the partnership with Benevity, we're going to have an access to a global database of nonprofits. So little by little, we'll be unlocking, let's say, the European market nonprofits, et cetera, et cetera, as we go along. But it is very vast. Amazing. Awesome. Uh, one other question that's come in. Can you describe what the Tesla API functionalities consist of? Um, and also, if you could speak to what future companies you're looking to partner with um, in the future. Yes, definitely. So in terms of Tesla, it's extremely interesting. You can already be tracking the number of miles driven, um, that is distance, fuels savings as well. Um, and I would say fuel time, and, time in your Tesla. And, and time in your Tesla. Thank you. Yes. So it's, um, it's quite vast already. The idea being that as we continue to grow, many more functionalities will come in place. Uh, furthermore, Tesla, as we mentioned before, is the industry leader. The idea is that we're going to be jumping on the entire EV market. So we're not going to be ignoring that either. We want to jump on board with GM, with Ford, et cetera, et cetera. Um, in terms of future APIs, we're always looking into, again, uh, mass user base and engagement. So we're already looking into, for example, streaming APIs, understanding that we want to promote the services of things like Netflix, um, Apple TV, et cetera, to now turn it into philanthropy, uh, the educational space. We can even look into the Kindle um, industry and e-readers. So that actually reading textbooks, becoming informed, education, et cetera, can also be philanthropic. So we're looking into vast different sectors. Um, the gaming industry is an important one for us as well. And naturally sports, understanding that so many athletes, uh, sports organizations, uh, teams, et cetera, plays a high value into the nonprofit world as well. And has much fan engagement that they're looking in in terms of the both businesses and the individual experience. So that's something that we're going to be jumping on board um, also. Awesome. I can definitely see the gaming market being huge, expanding on Fortnite. Um, I could see a partnership with Twitch being definitely a, a great next step. Um, right. Did have some comments in the chat um, about the QR code and a question about sending the link to beta access. Um, we will be emailing out the link for signing up for the beta access to everybody that's in attendance on this call. Thank you, Jack. Yes, if, if uh, the QR code is not working, it should lead you directly to the website. And on the website, you can sign in, uh, sign on for the wait list. If that's not the case, then we would appreciate uh, that we'd send that after the, after the presentation. And I'm sorry if that's, if that's not the case. Perfect. Well, we'll make sure to distribute that to all of the attendees. Mario, Maurizio, thank you guys so much. Uh, great job. And we are coming up right at our 20-minute mark. Um, so we will be transitioning over to Tournament. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you, Thanks for the time. Have a good day. So once again, everybody, that was Mario and Maurizio Hernandez with Noble. We will be sending out that beta sign-up link after this call. Up next, I would like to introduce Almat, joining us from Kazakhstan with Tournament, a global platform for competitions that allows anyone to create, find, participate, judge, and stream live tournaments. Almat, I will turn over the controls to you. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Uh, can you hear me? 
Yes, sir. Loud and clear. All right. Can you see my screen? Yep. Looks good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Again, um, my name is Almat. I'm the founder of Tone and Mon. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm joining you all from uh, Kazakhstan. I've been in Texas. We're located in Texas as a company. And thanks to IA, uh, I was able to launch Tone and Mon, uh, in the U.S. And uh, they've been a great help. Uh, so, so far, we've, uh, we've, we've built Tournaman and uh, we just started having our first traction. And, uh, and coming up in mid-June, we will have our uh, first paying customers. But anyways, let me uh, tell you what Tournaman is all about. So as, as I said, uh, as, as, as already Jack said, Tournaman is a platform for competitions. And we see Tournaman as the the world's largest contest platform. So what do I mean by contests, right? Contests are uh, competitions, anything from sports competitions, educational competitions, like debates, Olympiads, uh, sports, it could be like basketball, football, um, it could be anything like even fun, entertaining competitions, even like hot dog eating contests. So pretty much uh, I see it as a platform where you can find any kind of contest, any kind of tournaments, uh, maybe leagues, uh, competitions through categories and through filters. So, so what we do here in, um, so we see this as a, as a, a the main problem I saw in the tournament in the beginning, that there was no universal platform for competitions and especially achievements. Because um, I used to be a teacher and used to take my students to uh, all sorts of competitions and I, as an educator I saw that that was the most effective way to uh, teach a skill uh, and imp improve a skill when you go out there and you know, start practicing and, and start competing with other people. Uh, so in a way uh, nowadays even if you take like school children uh, they just go and attend these competitions and they get their certificates, their trophies but I noticed how like Throughout the world, I did my research and I saw that there's no platform where you can actually keep that, uh, keep your achievements, right? And uh, like digital trophies, your certificates and so on and so forth. So as a teacher, it was bugging me and I decided to uh, start this uh, platform and organize competitions. And, and uh, after some time, there were like other companies coming to me saying, that, okay, can you put my competitions on your website? Because now we have some, you know, audience and, and, and that. So moving on, we saw how uh, we saw how uh, it could become even big than than just organizing competitions and participating and you know um, uh, like keep, keep, uh, tracking your achievements because when you organize competitions you have not only participants not not only uh, contest creators but you can also attract sponsors because if you look at all these uh, competitions and tournaments, uh, you've probably seen how these big companies like Red Bull, Adidas, Nike, they sponsor these, you know, uh, major events. Turns out these these events uh, in, in marketing in these big companies, uh, it has a very uh, special place to, to advertise their, their brand because apparently competitions are the most engaging events uh, that you can pretty much advertise anything, right? So sponsors are very interested in these, you know, interesting competitions. And you have also other um, other roles as coaches. We have like you know, trainers, teachers, coaches. They they they, they teach their uh, uh, students and 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 to to participate in these competitions. You have judges, you have fans. So in a way, uh, this platform we see it as uh, in 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 the upcoming future, we will be adding more roles. Uh, in this in this platform, but so far we have you know features that basically manage uh, and manage competition. You, you will be able to create something from registration to you know payment systems like leaderboards, uh, rankings, and furthermore we will be adding also like uh, streaming uh, live competitions. So uh, as as a value proposition, we're saying that this is uh, this is an end to end solution like one one um, one stop shop where you can. Uh, do everything that's uh, from starting from award management, sponsorship management, marketing, audience identification. So pretty much in the future, it will be a huge database where 
uh, we would be even able to sell this data for uh, even bigger purposes because we have, you know, um, in, in many competitions, you have like all sorts of data, like, you know, gender, like age, uh, interests, uh, you know, uh, location and, and types of sports, types of things that people are interested in and, and, and etc. So we've done our market research. I mean, in a way, you understand that uh, sports and competitions are pretty much the most uh, popular events in the world. Like look at like uh, the World Cup, like look at, uh, I don't know, um, UFC. These things are very interesting because there is a competition uh, aspect involved, right? People like to compete. People like to see how other people compete and they, they uh, sort of uh, become supporters of it. They become fans of it. Like it's always the question like, who's the best? Like, is it uh, Michael Jordan versus um, uh, Shaquille? I, I'm, I'm not from US, but anyways, like it's, it, for me, it's like uh, Ronaldo versus Messi, right? Uh, or, uh, so it's, it's always over like Batman versus, I don't know, is Batman better than Superman? So it's always that question of like, who's the best? So in a way we have also ranking that uh, allows uh, you to see who's in top in, in whatever category that you're, that you're looking for. So, um, and then moving on, what we're right now doing is like our first uh, main thing as a business model. Uh, right now, we've done, we've done several competitions on our platform right now. And uh, in June, there will be paid competitions where participants will be paying uh, to participate in the competition as a registration fee. So we take 15% uh, cuts from, from, the, uh, from the transactions. And then furthermore, there will be uh, more monetization models like subscription for organizers, uh, advertise, advertising revenue, and so on and so forth. Right now, as attraction, um, what we did, like to be honest, recently we kind of hacked uh, this problem. As you know, this is a platform, and usually in the platform um, uh, startups, the, the main problem is the chicken or egg problem. Like, how do you solve like the critical mass of you know uh, getting uh, more creators of the contest or participants? So uh, recently, I just uh, posted a job. Uh, I posted a job offering on Indeed, saying that okay, tournament with tournament you can earn money by creating contests and competitions. And it will be even helpful if you're like a, a small uh, influencer where you have your certain audience and you can actually start earning money by organizing different challenges, different marathons. Uh, in a way, this is now a thing, right, on, on the website. And, and it was surprisingly that people were very interested in this idea and we've got a lot of uh, interest from especially uh, influencers. Right now, we're partnering with Infocracy, and uh, we've been reaching out to all sorts of info, uh, in, uh, influencers and bloggers. Like, you know, they're, they're like dancers who have like 300,000 uh, uh, followers on their social media, and they're very interested to organize competitions with us. First of all, it's a content for them. Second of all, uh, they can start earning money, right? So with, right now, our main goal is to get, um, is to partner with 100 US influencers and bloggers, uh, with that, like in within 12 months, we're uh, we're aiming to get uh, 100 paid con uh, contests, and with that, we we, we want to reach out to uh, 500,000 uh, dollar profit, right? Uh, with again, with the traffic of more than 100,000 participants, uh, and we've already uh, partnered with several of influencers right now, and uh, we've already partnered with several organizations here as UNESCO, uh, Revival Games, Infocracy, Olympia. Uh, these are the some of the organizations I, I would mention uh, that is very promising, and we've already done and tested uh, several competitions with them. Uh, there's some you know details like the roadmap here. We've done uh, the, the, in the first stage, we've done all the uh, features of you know uh, how there will be participants, teams. Uh, um, as, as organizers, they will be able to easily create competitions. We have like results, certificates, uh, online payments, uh, and most importantly, uh, as a feature, what we've noticed um, is basically share shareability, sharing ability of their results. When especially when participants participate in competitions, they earn something. They, they have certificates, they have digital digital trophies, but most importantly, they want to show off. So that's the sort of emotional need of the participants, where they have their achievements and they would like to. You know, just show the world that they've, you know, they've conquered something, they've won something. 
And it's very important, especially for our organizers, they, they realize that, saying that, you know what, this feature, I like this because um, it's just advertising at itself, right? Because participants will be just, you know, it, it, it will become as a viral thing for among people. So our idea is for after the competition ends, you know, after the results are out, uh, like all the participants would be able to share their results, share their you know, um, certificates uh, to the world, like through, through all the social media. Pretty much understanding that how short videos right now work, uh, we're going with the on the road that we will be as uh, we will be generating short sort of highlights of the results and achievements of that person, and that person would be able to like share it on TikTok, share it on Instagram, and so forth, uh, so on and so forth. Um, our goals, basically, in two three years, we would like to you know become this uh, platform uh, first in the US, where we have you know, we have all sorts of competitions like. Uh, across uh, all sorts of domains. Right now, we're partnering with um, like uh, esports, uh, some dancing, some you know educational competitions, and and, and so on. So uh, we've launched successfully uh, during uh, South by Southwest. We've run some competitions. We've tested it. Uh, people loved it. Uh, so right now, uh, we're raising two hundred thousand uh, dollars in in safe. And uh, the runway for, for this one would be well, around 12 months. Uh, and most, of, uh, most importantly, we will be investing in hardly in, uh, heavily in developments um, because I want to, uh, right now we have a development team and we want to increase that team to have uh, more developers because the features that we're planning to do is, uh, is actually like very uh, heavy because of the organizers requesting these, these features. The team, uh, my, my mainly uh, my main team are, are like main developers are from Kazakhstan, um, and uh, we have uh, advisors as as you all know, Angelos, Mohammed. We have uh, other team members in in uh, IA as well that are greatly helping me uh, in in this endeavor. Um, the demo uh, you can you can just go to tournament.com and just check that the website is is live right now. We have several competitions. Actually, let me just uh, quickly show uh, how it looks like. Um, so this is this is the main website tournament.com. This is how it looks like uh, the design wise. Uh, there, there would be like they, these are some live competitions that are actually going on now. Um, this is basically was uh, added recently. This is a paid competition. It will happen in June. Uh, so this would be our sort of paid, uh, first paid uh, competition. We have some several competitions that, uh, that happened in the past, uh, but those were like all uh, free competitions that we, that we uh, organized. Um, so overall, uh, this, is, this is pretty much it. Uh, thank you for your attention and uh, yeah. If you have any questions, just you can reach out to me or you can ask uh, right now. I'll be happy to answer all the questions. Thank you. Great stuff, Almat. We do have quite a few questions coming in from the audience. Um, first one, what types of tournaments does your um, platform specialize in organizing? And I think we saw a little bit there, um, esports, traditional sports, but maybe you can expand on that a little bit. Uh, come again, what kind of uh, categories does Tournament specialize in? That was the question. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, in I, ideally, Tournament is for anything. So, pretty much, uh, it, it will handle all the competitions in terms of uh, registration, payments, uh, and seeing all the participants, participants having their own profile, uh, creating teams, adding uh, team members, uh, like inviting judges, inviting uh, coaches, and pretty much posting the results. Now, I, I, should, be, I should also mention that there's also a bracketing system where we, we're also actually uh, working on where you will be able to just, you know, pair teams and you would be seeing like finals and semifinals, like group stage, all those mechanics, all those uh, technicalities. We're actually, doing this with this uh, company called Revival Games. They, they host all, like, a lot of um, online games uh, for Fortnite, for all Apex game, and Apex Pro. Uh, every month they have, like, you know, a very uh, ongoing competitions and they, they 
proposed to us to like you know implement bracketing system. So that that one is coming next. And also we have leaderboards. So pretty much to answer your question is uh, tournament is supposed to basically handle all the competitions because in a way all the competitions have the same uh, sort of uh, features. Uh, it's just who has won the competitions, like who has participated, and and so on and so forth. Yeah. Awesome, and we have about 10 questions in here, so we're just going to go rapid fire, um, if you can answer in, in like a one-liner. Uh, first of all, can you walk me through the process of setting up a tournament with your platform? Right now, uh, I mean, it will take some time, but usually I'll just, I'll just tell you, it's just uh, very intuitive. You just press a create uh, competition. Uh, here's, let me just quickly show it. So there, create contest. Um, and you would be just naming the contest, like for example, test, short description, categories, scope of the competition. Is it like international, national competition, CTYs? Uh, is it individual contest or like, I mean, is it like, is it, are you organizing the contest under your name or organization? You will set the mode like online, in person. You can put some links on it, uh, the time zone, contest date, registration deadline, and then moving on. Uh, it will be like um, it, it will it will ask you the participation information and you can add other information as well. So it will awesome. it will take me some time. So yeah, that will be. That the definitely best looks very intuitive. Uh, web hosted platform. You can customize it as much as you want. Uh, exactly. Next question: How do you ensure fair play and prevent cheating during tournaments? Again, one so line because we've got a lot of questions. Yeah, that, that that part specifically, I think it goes for the esports. Uh, I know that I, I've been in that sort of uh, uh, space as well. Well, to be honest, it's it, it depends on the organizers, right? So as a platform, I'm not like right now uh, can answer that because the 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 only thing that we can provide is basically the transparency of participants. They they join in, they have their own profile. Uh, so basically, we're keeping track of their achievements and keeping track of their history, right? As an organizer and as a participant. Uh, well, the the handling of the being fair, the fairness is up to the organizers themselves. So this is this is how, how it is. Awesome. And next question: um, Do you provide any tools or resources for promoting the tournament and attracting participants? Um. Right now, our tool would be would be in Focusy. So we're partnering with this uh, another startup, which is also a portfolio company of uh, IA. Uh, they're also working with influencers, and uh, we will be using them as a tool because uh, we want to really work with influencers. I mean, nowadays we all know that influencers are actually uh, very powerful in terms of marketing. So uh, depending on the category that you're organizing the competition. Uh, I think we should we could we easily could be able to find influencers that would be interested to like promote that uh, that contest. Yeah. Awesome. And I think we have time for maybe one more. Are there any restrictions on the number of participants or types of games that can be organized through the platform? And then real quickly, we will um, send out answers via email to the remaining questions. Yeah, right now, no. There's no limit to the number of participants. But furthermore, we will be adding this because of our next business model. Our next business model is basically subscription-based. So imagine this, like a, a contest creator will be creating a contest, but uh, they will be using tournament for free up to 200 participants. Like I'm just giving a number right now. 200, but after 200, if you have more than 200 participants, if you're expecting more than 200 participants, then you have to subscribe to tournament and then we'll, you will have that unlimited uh, option and features that comes also with other features as well. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Almat. Again, we will um, save these questions that went unanswered uh, for the sake of time, though. But Almat, thank you so much um, for presenting Tournament today. Great job. Once again, for the crowd, that was Almat with Tournament. And up next, I would like to introduce Akshay Dapali with Nash which helps to monitor employee sentiment using AI and psychology to engage employees with actionable nudges. Hello. And Akshay, I will give you the controls yes. and stop sharing here. Yep. 
Um, hey everyone, uh, Akshay here from Nash. Let me quickly share my screen here. Yes, uh, so uh, at Nash, we are building happier, engaged, and productive workforces using AI and psychology. And basically, we are trying uh, to solve uh, two problems here. Uh, so one is how the feedback is uh, you know, being gathered from the employees. And the second problem is what happens after that feedback. So the research shows that only 8% of the ma uh, managers and HRs um, have the tools to take action after the feedback. 92% of them, uh, they are sitting on all this data, uh, but they don't know the exact actions to take next. So they try solving the challenges, um, you know, the people problems at the surface level with some, you know, weekend activities or a team lunch or some, you know, pool table in the office or things like that. Uh, well, uh, with Nash, uh, we actually have uh, built a, a proprietary uh, unique framework that rapidly and continuously diagnoses, analyzes, and addresses people challenges. Um, so it's very simple how it works. Simply, um, we use microservice to gather feedback. Uh, we have a people <laughs> science team who uh, designs the questions, the framework, and everything. Um, and then we help. Uh, the clients identify the challenges through the dashboard, and then we use uh, psychology, something called nudge theory, to address the challenges. So let me quickly show you how that works. So this is the employee interface uh, where we uh, gather feedback. So we ask a lot of open-ended and closed-ended questions, as you can see here. Uh, on the open-ended responses, we do natural language processing, uh, you know, sentiment analysis and behavioral analysis and uh, you know understand uh, the challenges that people are going through through these quick uh, surveys um, all that gets consolidated in the dashboard where we show a bunch of information you know like the response rate the mood of the organization the pulse the manager ratings and we also have these uh, configurable attributes um, um, you know that uh, it connects with each and every uh, organization and their uh, company values or cultural pillars that can be measured in a tangible way. And then we have these, uh, you know, heat maps that slices and dices the data, uh, the employee onboarding experience, and, you know, the progression of the organization uh, every quarter, the employee net promoter score, and all the challenges that we have uh, identified uh, through both the open-ended and closed-ended questions along with the breakdown of those. Um, but you know, this is pretty much a straightforward uh, dashboard that's easy to understand uh, for um, HRs and managers. But something that we actually have uh, that's really powerful is what happens after this. So yes, we help uh, the clients identify the challenges, but what's next? That's the big problem that we are trying to solve, correct? Um, so uh, what we do is, uh, once we have identified the challenge, we address the challenge with something called nudges. So for example, consider this question, do you feel seen at work? And I select never. So in that case, uh, keeping context in mind, the system triggers uh, uh, a nudge, something like this, where it identifies the uh, challenge or the category of the challenge, which is recognition or visibility in this case. And it has recommended these six action items for me to execute. Now, um, the nudge that is sent out to me um, is unique to me. Uh, it, it's like a personal coach. Um, and uh, nudges are like personal coach uh, at scale, right? Because each and every organization has so many hundreds of thousands of employees. Um, and the nudges sent out to each employee is unique to each employee. So it's personalized to each individual. And the nudges are multi-tiered as well. So it's not only the employees who receive the nudges, but even the department heads and HRs and managers and CXOs will receive the nudge as well. And once these nudges are executed, uh, the system uh, learns from it, sees uh, if it's working or not, and closes the feedback loop. Um, and uh, this is uh, uh, our secret weapon. Um, so it's not just a survey tool. Serving is, in fact, 20% of what we do. 80% of the product is what happens after that. Um, so going back uh, to uh, the presentation here, um, so we have a, a dedicated people science team who come up with the questions, who, who design uh, and qualify these questions and nudges for diversity, equity, and uh, you know, uh, inclusion. 
uh, and then uh, you know design the whole framework that understands people challenges and then solves it uh, using nudges uh, we are operating in a big market and since covid this market is growing rapidly uh, with at least 14% cgr uh, that's expected to grow through 2026 um, in the short period of time we have acquired around 35 clients um, uh, in with users spread across three countries and we have uh, three more countries in the pipeline and uh, out of the uh, companies that are in the pipeline, three of them are enterprise clients uh, where we are in the advanced stages of the sales cycle. Um, we are looking, currently we are at 4,500 users, uh, but we are looking uh, at a pipeline of 50,000 users in the next few months. And we are quickly growing at a rate of 30% uh, month on month. Um, now, the way we conduct uh, you know, surveys, gather feedback, and what happens after that gives us the edge to uh, you know, understand people more closely. And because of that, uh, we have 28% higher engagement than the industry standard. Uh, and because of the higher engagement, we are able to identify the challenges uh, uh, more accurately um, with 90% plus accuracy. And we are able to flag these challenges before they amplify into something big and expensive. Uh, we do have some uh, healthy competition. Um, uh, but uh, when it comes to the inclusion of psychology and the nudges uh, and everything, uh, we uh, actually, uh, by far, uh, when you add the other features along with the uh, uh, unique framework that we have, um, we are much uh, better uh, by the comp uh, competition by a long shot. In fact, the closest uh, competitor that we have, homo.com, um, uh, has only two of our features. Uh, and uh, they use uh, nudges uh, a little bit differently than how we use them. Uh, we have a solid team. Um, Angelos is uh, uh, one of the investors and advisor when it comes to business, along with uh, uh, Jacob Mo Morgan, who brings us uh, domain expertise as well. Uh, he's an author of uh, four best-selling uh, books, uh, New York uh, Times best-selling books as well, when it comes to uh, culture and uh, employee engagement. Um, and recently, uh, we have also been identified and recognized by uh, G2 as one of the high performers in their quadrant, in the upcoming quadrant. And uh, I am pretty confident that in the next few months, uh, we will be running for leaders as well, and we would love to have you guys uh, as a uh, part of the journey. And to help us to uh, get there, we are looking to raise uh, $500,000 at Convertible uh, Safe. Um, and this will help us to reach about 250,000 to 350,000 users in the next few months, uh, focusing on just the major markets of uh, North America, uh, US, Canada, and also uh, APAC markets. So, uh, I'm open to questions. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, this is the whole product. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or any um, in part of the product that you would like to see again. Awesome. Thank you so much, Akshay. First question from the crowd here. How long does it take to install slash implement the nudges to a decent sized company? Um, Considering a decent sized company is around a thousand or two thousand employees, um, in fact, it it won't take a much of dedicated time because we have a, a nudge bank uh, already uh, within the system. So as long as the uh, organization is onboarded, uh, the nudges are sent out right away uh, within the first uh, couple of weeks itself. Great. And is this a opt-in slash opt-out model for employees, or would your clients require employee participation? Uh, that's actually uh, an internal policy of the clients. Uh, we have some clients who have uh, an opt-out uh, option, but then there are some uh, other clients who enforce uh, this uh, on their employees. So it's completely dependent on um, you know each and every client. Uh, but even if we have given that opt-out option, uh, we are able to rake in about 28% more engagement rates. So the slide that I showed you, um, this one, um, this is for opt-out. Um, and if we go for opt-in, it's almost 100%.
Awesome. Well, those are great results with the opt-in, but nice to have that flexibility for the client side. Yep. Uh, yep. What about your um, data security and governance? Can you um, speak to that a little bit? Yes. Um, so we uh, are VAPT certified right now, uh, but uh, some of the funds that we're going to raise uh, is going to get some certifications like SOC 2, ISO, and GDPR compliance as well in the upcoming month. Uh, so um, right now we are getting a lot of uh, interest from some European uh, organizations and uh, um, a part of this fund is going to get us that compliance so that we can work uh, in that geography. Awesome, and another question, I believe the answer is yes to this, but can you predict burnout or dropping out and turnover? Yes, um, in fact, uh, there's another slide here, if I can quickly pull it up. Uh, this is my sales uh, slide. Uh, this is the ROI that we are providing to our uh, clients. 500% um, increase in listening with 5% increase in productivity. And uh, yes, we reduced uh, attrition, burnout, turnover. Uh, all this went because of the automation, we are able to save more than 80% of uh, the management time as well. Awesome, you can definitely see the ROI argument with that reduction in turnover with the HR recruiting training costs for new employees oh. or replacement employees. Um, another question from the crowd, have you done work with psychologists to gain some of this information? If not, which sources are you using? No, actually we have a people science team. We have organizational psychologists who have designed the questions and the nudges. Um, so we work very closely with organizational psychologists. Very good, very good. Do you have any um, future monetization strategies outside of what you've discussed today? Um, yes, um, a couple of uh, strategies is, uh, um, uh, one of the strategy is consulting, um, where uh, once uh, this, this dashboard is presented, uh, we go in as consultants and we uh, work with the clients, uh, engage more uh, in person uh, and help them achieve their visions and the targets for the year. The second is with our uh, you know, strategic partnerships uh, model where you know, we understand that we sit uh, you know, right between the exit of an employee and the entry of an employee. Um, so there are a lot of uh, solutions out there that help with the hiring and then um, all the other compliances and then uh, towards the exit, they help with the exit uh, formalities. So if we uh, you know, team up with these uh, organizations, I think we can create a holistic solution for our clients and that will uh, provide another stream of revenue for us. Awesome. And are there any future plans to let the users drive the content? In other words, if I'm an employee and I didn't like one of the questions that I got and I could suggest, you know, some feedback for how that question should be asked or, you know, a suggestion box for questions that I would like to be asked. Uh, is that in the roadmap at all? Yeah, in fact, we do have a suggestion box here in the product. Um, so we do uh, uh, many times get suggestions, um, but these suggestions are mostly related uh, to the organizational policies and such. Uh, it's not really related on the way we ask questions um, or the way the nudges are designed. Um, so to answer your question, um, so far, uh, none of our clients have asked us and i think that's our advantage that we do the heavy lifting for them uh, we design the questions for them we design the nudges for them but we have the option to uh, where the uh, clients can customize the questions to revolve around some uh, internal processes or customize the nudges uh, as well accordingly um, and that comes we charge premium for that so yes, we have that. Uh, it's driven by the management of the organization uh, that we are serving, not necessarily uh, by the employees. Um, but sure, if uh, in the future organizations want uh, the questions and the nudges to be driven by the employees, then we will definitely consider that we listen closely to clients, we work with them, we understand their challenges, and then we design uh, the product and the feature roadmap accordingly.
Awesome. And kind of pigging, piggybacking off of the opt-in slash opt-out question, if you had an opt-out client that, say, had a low utilization rate, uh, meaning they have 100 employees and only 20 of them are actually interacting with NASH and receiving the nudges and responding, is there any sort of incentivization structure to drive end users to interact with the platform more frequently? Yeah. Yes, uh, in fact, uh, we uh, are designing something called Nash Coins. Um, so it's like a virtual uh, currency that people can earn um, uh, every time they engage with the product, like if they execute the nudges, if they respond to the questions. So uh, we are uh, rewarding them, uh, and these coins can be exchanged for some, um, you know, like a coupons uh, with some partner brands. So we are building a catalog of brands we have five brands on board already um and while we are building that catalog we are also uh developing um the uh reward system um so yes uh, we have that in the roadmap it's uh, gonna happen um pretty soon in fact i think by the end of next month we'll be launching it awesome and can you go into a little bit more detail that's Great. And also, I think, speaks to the question about additional revenue streams, having kind of the brand partnerships. But what sort of brands are you um, in discussion with about partnering for the Nashcoin purchases? So right now, we are focusing on the region. Um, we have, uh, you know, uh, the brands that we have on board are right now um, in India. So even if I name them, even if they're big names, I don't know how many people will be able to recognize uh, but we are forming categories. Um, so we are getting brands in fashion. We are getting brands in, um, you know, FMCG and food uh, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, health and wellness, things like that. So we are building categories. Um, right now, the five brands that we have, they come from travel, um, fashion uh, and food. Uh, these are the categories that we have. But going forward, we would love to have uh, global brands like Starbucks or Amazon on board so that no matter uh, where uh, the user is, uh, right, even if the organization is hiring remote employees in some other countries, um, they can take advantage of these uh, coins and, uh, you know, uh, avail the offers that goes with them. Awesome, Akshay. Well, thank you so much for presenting today. That is bringing us very close to time. We'll see if any last minute questions come in. Um, but once again, everybody, that was Akshay Dipali with Nash. Um, as a reminder, we will be sending out contact information for each of the founders of the portfolio companies that presented today, um, as well as the link to register for the um, beta site for Noble. Um, and email responses for any of the questions that came through that went unanswered. Um, so thank you everybody for joining us today. We are gonna be running these investor pitches um, on a bi-weekly basis going forward. So be on the lookout for invites to future presentations. And once again, thank you so much everybody for joining us this afternoon.